Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to cover different types of weathering and also the formation and structure of soils. When a rock formed within the Earth's crust is uplifted and exposed to either the hydrosphere or the atmosphere, it may undergo changes in its appearance or composition. The breakdown of rock due to physical or chemical changes is called weathering. The end product of weathering is eventually soil. Physical weathering changes the physical form of a rock, often by breaking it into smaller pieces, but it does not change the rock's chemical composition. Frost action is an important form of physical weathering in areas where temperatures regularly dip below zero degrees Celsius. Water will seep into the crack in a rock, it will expand as it freezes, and makes the cracks in the rocks a little larger. Ice will melt and liquid water will evaporate and the rock is left more porous than before. Over time, alternate freezing and melting will cause the rock to crumble. Plant roots can also grow in the cracks of rocks and you can see here a tree is basically engulfing this one. Animals that burrow underground are also agents of weathering. And abrasion happens when rock particles are carried along by a stream or by wind, and they bump and wear down each other. Glaciers and gravity can also cause abrasion to happen. Most rocks under the Earth's crust remain stable under the conditions in which they were formed. However, when these rocks are uplifted to the surface, they can undergo chemical weathering. Rocks become unstable and change into new substances in chemical weathering. It breaks down rocks by changing the rock's chemical composition, and water is almost always involved in the chemical reactions that changes the natures of these rocks. Chemical weathering requires heat energy and often water to bring about the chemical changes in the rock. It takes place more rapidly in warm, moist climates, and can only take place at the surface of a rock. So when a rock is broken down into smaller pieces, the surface area becomes an increased um, area. So chemical weathering rates will increase following the physical weathering events. So in other words, if you have frost wedging, for example, and it breaks open this rock, makes it more porous, that gives more surface area for chemical weathering to occur, and the rock will break down faster. Chemical weathering can also be sped up by aggregations of airborne pollutants as well, such as the nitrous and sulfur dioxides. Physical and chemical weathering alter the rocks exposed at the surface of the earth. As a result, a layer of weathered rock fragments called soil covers much of the earth. Soil that remains on top of the bedrock from which it is formed is called residual soil. It is similar to, in composition to the parent bedrock. Soil that is carried away from the location of its parent rock to a new location is called transported soil and it can have a different chemical composition of that of the bedrock on which it rests. Agents of erosion such as running water, moving ice, wind, along with gravity, are responsible for transporting soils from one location to another. Under natural conditions, both physical and chemical weathering processes are usually involved in the development of soils. Physical weathering breaks solid rock into small particles. Chemical weathering changes hard minerals into softer forms. Plants and animals add organic materials in the form of waste products and dead organisms. The decay of organic remains produces organic acids, which accelerates chemical weathering. Burrowing animals, such as earthworms, insects, and rodents, help circulate air and water through the soil and mix organic remains and minerals together. All of these processes may form a soil with distinct layers called soil horizons. The upper layer is the A horizon. The top of the A horizon is usually rich in dark colored organic remains, also called humus. Water, air, and a variety of living things are also present. Some important minerals have leached or dissolved out of the A horizon and carried deeper into the soil as water infiltrates farther into the ground. The B horizon is poor in organic minerals, but it is our materials, but it is enriched by minerals that have leached out of Horizon A. Horizon C is composed of broken up bedrock in various stages of decomposition and weathering, and it sits upon the unweathered solid bedrock. And again, remember, C horizon can be either 
um, parent soils or it can be transported soils. As water infiltrates the horizons of a soil, it picks up ions from substances formed during the chemical weathering of the rocks. After infiltration, a soil solution containing ions is present in the water supply. Plants use the soil solution for growth. Some of the ions likely to be present in a soil solution are potassium, nitrogen, calcium ion, and phosphate ions, which, by the way, are exactly the same compositions as fertilizer. So this is something that basically forms natural fertilizer, although sometimes is insufficient for crop growth. Okay, so that concludes the Weathering in Soils lecture. And I hope you have a great day, and next time we will cover erosion and deposition.